Hey, what is up, everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to Wildcats Tuesday. The new book is dropping. So what better way to celebrate the new book than to look at the best book? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. All right. No, but uh, yeah, Wildcats, um, the new the new series is coming out today. And uh, I, I was like, oh, you know, it's a nice opportunity to visit this. I know people, people enjoy seeing... Um, the work that Travis did and um, that I inked and I'm more than happy to do a video on it. And I have some really, really beautiful scans from the books. So this is going to blow you away. I've also got um, black and white art that I can share after we get through a few of these color pages. And uh, it should be a really fun video. And then I hope that it gets people excited to go, um, you know, pick up the new book, read it, check out the art and uh, hopefully the Wildcats can continue in some way, shape, or form in DC. And if not, the Blaster Kid, which will be in the spirit of early Wildstorm books and other things that I like. And uh, it should be fun. So either way, you've I've got you covered. <laughs> All right, I'll talk to you. Or, so I was going to go. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. <laughs> All right, let's close this. Oh, oh, let me talk about the cover first really quick. Um, <laughs> uh. This is penciled, inked, and colored by Travis. So what he would do is he would pencil this thing nice and tight. He would ink it with India ink and ink washes. And then he would go in and he would color it with colored pencil, like Prisma colored pencils over his washes. And uh, man, he would just do such a kick-ass job with this stuff. It was really, really incredible to see. And uh, he just had such a level of patience for blending things that... Um, he really could get some incredible results, you know, like a painter um, where, uh, you know, your patience really um, is rewarded with these smooth, smooth, just beautiful fades and transitions of light and shade and whatnot. And, and uh, boy, it looks great. So this one's all Travis and boy, he crushed it. I, I only opened this so that I would have the folder open, but this is... Um, this was our original wizard cover. So we did two covers for wizard and this was the first one that we did. And for whatever reason it was rejected or not used. And so we ended up having to do another one, but uh, this ultimately ended up finding a home on a little preview book called wild times. Pretty easy to find. You can find it even online, I'm sure. Uh, but we just did the cover, but it's a nice, it's a nice um, single piece with the voodoo and grifter um kind of out of costume i guess he's in costume but just not um super uh with the mask down which always is like way more insane voodoo's got the creepy daemonite arm pop popping off and uh all right so let's get to the actual wildcats comics I didn't go through the whole books, but I grabbed a nice stack of pages from the first two issues. Um, it just takes too long to go through two full books, and this video would end up being 90 minutes, uh, probably all said and done. So to keep it a little bit tighter, um, I just cherry-picked a nice batch of pages from both books. Uh, so this is the opening credits page. Almost all of this was penciled and inked by Travis and I, meaning that... Um, uh, all this lettering we actually did. He did. I inked the Balance of Terror, but he actually penciled and inked all this. Um, this is the only thing that I think was put in digitally, but all of this is all on the original artboard. What we've got here is we've got Grifter under the water in Venice, Italy, about to pull a mission, and it's really, really cool. And, you know... To be honest, it was a really refreshing way to start a comic book back then. And something that was very, very different. Um, for whatever reason, it just it stood out. And Travis drew so well that he could really make anything feel quite epic. And uh, it's, it's it's really an art form that he has. That, that, like, you know, any other penciler would draw this and it would look fine. You know, it would be, it would be really cool. Some people could do a great job on it. But Travis has such a unique unique um ideas i don't even i it's really difficult to explain and i think even people that are fans of his um 
find it challenging to completely pinpoint what makes this stuff so um, interesting. It's really good with shapes. I mean, that's definitely part of it. I mean, I have my own theories on it, but I don't. I don't want to do an hour video where I'm <laughs> psychoanalyzing his work or whatever you call it. Um, but uh, anyway, um, uh, one interesting thing going back and looking at this work, and I don't really revisit it that often, to be honest. So I haven't seen this in a while, but seeing it this morning as I was getting ready to do this video. One thing I realized that was very unique about this book that's very different than a lot of the stuff that I worked on is I really, really remember working on these pages and areas of the pages. I remember so clearly sitting at my desk and like inking this pole. And I remember doing the roofs and I remember inking this in here and I remember doing this. And it's very weird because like even this and just, just lots of areas I remember really just actually physically doing it and that's that's so unusual i the way i would explain it is i've done in my career probably let's say six to eight thousand pages of art for comics and that doesn't count all the stuff that i've done on my own practicing and working on stuff so i've done a lot a lot of work a tremendous amount of pages most of the stuff, if I visually see it, I can remember working on. Not working on it, but I mean, I will, I'll recognize it. Like, someone could show me, like, a page that I inked off, uh, you know, years ago. And, and, and I'll go, oh, okay, I remember that from the book. But I don't remember working on it. I just can visually recognize that it was from a certain issue, or it's a certain pencil, or it's my inks. But I don't... It's, it's really rare that I remember working on something. And this stuff I do. Like, it's really trippy. Um... I, I think because I had such a big growth curve during this like probably year to two year period that um, I was more aware of things, you know, like like it was like you almost were going like pay attention because this is like big. This is a this is a big thing. It's bigger than you. <laughs> So I wanted to point this out, although I don't know if I open the spread. If not, I can grab it. Um, there's a double page spread in issue two that everybody always will remark about the hand. But if you look, this hand is very, very similar to Voodoo's hand in the other drawing. It's a flip of the, the thing. My point being is that it's it's just the way that he draws hands on the trigger and, and holding the gun. And right or wrong, it's just the way that he, when he goes to sketch it in and thinks about how he would draw this because he most of the time draws out of his head, um, you know, it can work and it cannot work. And so, um, but it is really, really similar and it's almost got the same vibe, totally different um, angle, but I, I caught that looking at it today. God, my phone's gonna start beeping. Um, uh, this is great. But this, this opening sequence is so fun and then Grifter comes out of the water and there's this deal going down and he's spying on them and climbs up the wall and he's gonna like eavesdrop upside down it's so clever uh, it's interesting too because like i i never saw the script for issue one two or three but i'm nearly sure i have the scripts for four five and six somewhere uh and i definitely have the script for five and i i feel like i have the other ones but one thing that i have that's really cool is I have a script that was written for Travis for a prelude or whatever you want to call it, like an intro <coughs> to the book that was, I think, a four-page, like, story. I don't know if you call it a story, but four-page thing that was the lead-in to this issue. Um, he never drew it, and I have that script here. And um, I was considering... <laughs> excuse me, after I finished the first issue of Blaster Kid, actually drawing those pages um, and and kind of having that out there for people because uh, it's really a shame that he didn't draw it and, and the only reason that I never have done it before, I started laying it out years ago. But at the time, I really wasn't at a level where I could probably do it justice. But I'm getting close to the point where I think that I could actually do something probably pretty cool with it. And so... Um, yeah, I might give it a shot after the first issue of Blaster Kid is done, maybe like to kind of celebrate. And uh, it'll be really fun. It'd be nice to have it out there. Maybe I'll get it colored too. Um, but uh, yeah, so so there's all kinds of like little things that could still sort of transpire um, through this. 
it's it's interesting because I, I don't really follow well wildcats hasn't had much story or anything going on with it for a long time but um I, I don't really go back and look at those books very often i mean even the like the jim lee stuff i mean i really haven't seen it in years and if if i break it out it's usually like a quick like you know you look at a couple issues and then they kind of go back you know away for a year or two but i, I mean a long time ago, if you asked me, I would definitely say that Wildcats was probably my favorite superhero team. I did like Cyberforce a lot, but, um, you know, I, I didn't grow up on X-Men and stuff like that. And so I don't really have much of a connection to the X-Men characters. I mean, I think they're cool, but it's not like, um, like this was a superhero team that I actually kind of followed. On this page, um... I've got a photo of me working on this when it's not completely finished. So that'll come up in the, 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 I have a bonus section of this video that I'm going to shoot for you all. <laughs> It'll all be part of one video. <laughs> the black and white stuff. But I, yeah, I have, a, I have a photo of me actually working on this page. It's kind of cool. A, a fan visited Wildstorm and took the photo and sent it to me a few years later. I have no idea who it was. I always want to credit them and thank them for it because it's a really cool thing that I wouldn't have, you know, um, without them. So it's it's like kind of neat. So if you see this video and it was you that sent me the photo, let me know because it's, it's like I really do appreciate it. Um, yeah, like he, he has a real like, God, like look at this sequence right here of just this guy reacting to... Um, this explosion it's so cool it's really crazy crazy dude everyone always loves this bam 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 okay like seriously I've had so much trouble shooting this video I keep getting interrupted and it's like it just won't stop I'm just gonna peek at my phone and see what this is It's like five different people texting me at once. Different threads. It's like quite popular today, apparently. All right, Spartan, take me to my happy place away from my phone. No, I actually am lucky. I I, uh, I don't have to deal with that like some people, I'm sure. So um, what do we got here? This piece in person is so cool because the, like... Um, try this one more time um like on the oh no it removed his hand um on on the or the original the way that he drew it and and removed like not detail but like he didn't have any black in this area it really was like cool because it, it like it really could look at the black and white and it really felt like it was glowing it was really really cool effect that worked really uh, without color which is pretty impressive and he even kind of the way that he chose to suggest the rendering that I did on the hand um, helped helped it along. He he's he draws wood grain. I love that little just extra sort of loving that he puts on things. You'll see these guns come up in a, a next page that um, have uh, wood grain on the handles and they look so cool. I love this shot. Oh, man, this guy's so cool. Yeah, it was it was interesting. So when before I was inking Travis, I was working on Wetworks, and I had started with Pat Lee, and Pat and I did I don't know about five issues on and off. And Pat came in, and it was the craziest, most detailed stuff that I had seen, kind of coming through Wildstorm for a while. It was it was a little wild style, but man, it was just hyperbolically detailed. And I was like, finally, I'm working on something that's going to matter. This is going to be cool. Like, Pat Lee is, like, a pretty, like, known artist. We're on Wetworks. He's crushing it. And he 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 was just about to start Dreamwave, probably, and, and kind of lost, I don't know if he lost interest, but, like, like just didn't, didn't finish the book. We didn't do as much as we were planning on doing it. And so um, 
after that, I inked, um, I think it was just Ken Lashley. So Ken Lashley and I worked on Wetworks for about a year together, maybe, maybe less, but, um, and, uh, that was, it was really fun. And Ken's really, really good. Like he's such a good penciler, but, um, the books were always late. And so we would always be rushed. And I just kind of felt like I was, I was kind of going from one sort of dysfunctional work situation to the next. And then Wildstorm was going to cut back. And so as anyone that's seen in my videos where I talk about my transition from literally almost any, my comic book career to, to working on this, um, uh, Jim had a big meeting and was like, basically got rid of probably 30% of the artists that worked at the studio in house. Um, and, uh, as I was walking out and I was in the to go pile, he basically like, he gave everyone a color. I think if I remember correctly, like red or blue. And then he said like everyone that got a red number, you can, you can go ahead and take off. And then everyone that had blue, um, was in the pile that was being basically told that, you know, um, Wildstorm was cutting back. He created a certain stable of books. They put the teams on the books, you know, like the lineups and the people that didn't have a book were unfortunately, you know, going to be out of work. And I mean, people were crying and it was like, it was a whole thing. Not like, like, I mean, I don't want to overblow it, but, but I mean, you know, people were very upset and in particular, I'm sure when they walked out of that office, they felt like I did, which was, you were like pretty much in complete shock. Like Spartan's face right here is like, what just happened? But as I was, I was walking out. Jim pulled me aside and dude, I'm like a scrub inker. I'm really like nothing. Honestly, I was kind of friends with Jim at that point, but I didn't know him real well. Um, and, and, uh, he said, Hey, he goes, you know, you, you were the one person that I really wanted to keep. I just don't have anything for you. Um, you know, but, but, but like, he let me know that and it was, it was nice. I mean, it was nice to hear, but I was still in the to go pile. And, um, I had, I think, I don't even know, maybe two issues of what works left. So maybe two months worth of work. And, um, during that time was when Travis was doing the new horizons covers and, um, he might've been working on wildcats 50 with JD, <coughs> excuse me. And, and, um, I ate peanuts before I started the video. <laughs> like they're firing back on me now. Um, uh, yeah. And so JD, uh, couldn't or didn't wasn't interested in doing the new wildcat series because like a lot of a lot of people like not not a lot of people but travis was hard to ink and you really like he had to have good eyes and you know there was a lot to it then it was a lot of work and um so anyway jd and travis were splitting ways and there was this opportunity to try out for the book and it really is what saved my career so long story short um I tried out for the book. I did some really, really nice samples and ended up getting the job that Tra Travis picked me to ink him. And um, it really did pull my ass out of the fire because if I wouldn't have got that, I would have actually left Wildstorm. You know, I, that would have been the end of my um, my career, really, because I, I, don't, I don't think that I would have. Um, it's highly unlikely that I would have tried to get work at DC or Marvel. Um, I had no connections and just, you know what I mean? Like, I, I hadn't done anything worthwhile. So that would have worked against me too. It's it's interesting to think about that because when I tell that story, I've never really thought about that. Is that I hadn't done Chris Bocklow. I hadn't really like I hadn't done Travis. I didn't have the Wills Portacio, you know, Wetworks work that I did a couple of years later under my belt. I didn't have any of that stuff, and so I would have been leaving Wildstorm really with like basically a very like average resume. So this job really like saved me, but I was, I was ready for, for this work, you know, I just hadn't had the opportunity to work on something like this. So it's, it's pretty interesting, you know, he does this stuff so good. Like it's, it's really interesting too, because one thing that, that I've, I've, I've recognized in Travis's work, but I've never really seen him pursue it is he, he sometimes like he draws almost like manga style mechs and stuff like that he did it with like the metal gear solid stuff. Some of the new horizons pieces had a little bit of it, but I never really saw him looking at that type of stuff. And, um, the internet, it, it, it wasn't what it is today where you could find all this stuff like in a second. So I, I don't know where he got the aesthetic for his, his crazy vehicles and stuff like that, but he really could do some very wild designs. I mean, it's not like there wasn't, uh, you know, manga didn't exist or something, but, 
I like I, I knew him pretty well. I'd been to his house. I'd seen his comics and the things that he had around him. He didn't have any of that stuff, so I don't I don't know where where he came up with all these wild designs. He's very creative, very very creative. I would say you can get to know someone if you help them move, and I think I helped Travis move two times, definitely once. I remember moving very heavy appliances upstairs <laughs> he lived it was like it was like this old like a walk up like a three-story walk up and he lived on like the second or third floor and we're carrying like a vintage stove and freaking refrigerator <laughs> it was crazy but yeah when you move someone you you see all their stuff you, you go this guy doesn't have any fucking comics like <laughs> it was really weird I'm not a nosy person, but I'm just, I'm just, I'm half kidding, but half serious too. He, this is actually really funny. I will say this, thinking about his house, he, <laughs> in his dining room, he had, this is when he was shared, uh, he lived close to me at this point. He was only like down the street from me. Um, he, he had, um, he was sharing a place with Nick Bell and Nick was, um, a Wildstorm. I don't know if he was production or colors or what Nick did, but Nick worked at Wildstorm and they, they shared an apart, a house, not an apartment. Um, and, uh, when I went to visit him, he had the biggest clock on the wall that I've ever seen. I mean, it was like, I don't know how big around this thing was. I assume it was Travis's, but I, I remember thinking to myself that there was something very funny about a, a guy that's like notorious <laughs> not being timely on like you know like turning in jobs and stuff like that had like the biggest clock ever i i thought that was hysterical it's a goofy thing to remember but i remember a lot laughing i was like you of all people with a big clock come on and this is the only time in the book that the whole team is together in costumes it's so it's so trippy because it's uh, i was when I see this piece, I always think it's kind of bittersweet because it was cool that we got to do this, but it was such like, it was such a small slice of what, you know, like as a Wildcats fan, you hope to see, which was at some point, not necessarily that the team was all together, like in group shots all the time, but that, that they would, because they're the way that the comic was set up is they were kind of like individual stories of, of they had, they, they were apart and what they were up to while they were apart. And so the, you know, the, expectation would be at some point they would band together for some greater you know experience so uh unfortunately i it never happened in the book as far as i know maybe it did it's it's i don't remember who i don't remember who continued to write the book after say like issue seven did joe casey come on then because we dustin Wynn and i did wildcats 3.0 but that was like a completely different series. I want to say, God, I was I was trying to remember. I think that this book went like thirty issues. Oh, you know what? This is the one that Sean Phillips came on. Okay, yeah, that's right. I forgot. So Sean Phillips came on at some point after us and then he and um i guess joe casey did a really long run on it that's right and then 3.0 was with dustin and i and that went i don't know 25 issues or something this is a real nice cover this is the same techniques as is the issue one cover so this will be pencils and then inked with ink washes and then um uh color This is another one where we did the um, the lettering on it. I'd love to have an opportunity to ink this stuff now. Was, I'm I'm such a better inker. I mean, I was I was getting good at this point and I could do good work, but I just I draw so much better now and I can ink I can still ink stuff like this. I mean, the, my, most of my work is a, like more detailed, but um, oh man, I would love to take a crack at this stuff now. I considered it was funny I considered the other day because I was like um I was doing some studies of a different artist um for for inking techniques Jeff Jones Jeffrey Catherine Jones and um 
it did make me go like I don't know why I went up while I was working on it. I was like, oh, it would be funny to go back and like ink a Travis page now and see what I could do. But you know, I just remember I was like, this is so fun inking this stuff. Look at the palm tree. Isn't that cool? Those sexy lines. The trash can. Beautifully drawn. Love in every little nook and cranny. <laughs> Here we go. Damonite. Yeah. Man, he got good at drawing these guys. If you look at if you look at the Wildcat special, which was <clears throat> Uh, I guess it would have been seven or eight years before this. So he had been drawing the Wildcats for a while. See, the, it, it's his career is very interesting, too, because he broke in in 91-ish at D.C. and did a decent amount of work. I mean, he worked there for a good like year, maybe like 16 months total, um, and did like four or five issues of Dark Stars. He did a Flash Annual. He did a Showcase short story, a Green Lantern short story some covers and there's there's some good stuff that he did there and then stuff where you can definitely tell that he's a new penciler learning to draw and both are fine there i like i like all of it i think it's interesting and fun to see and then he even did a little bit of work for marvel um when he got to wildstorm he was drawing real well but he had been drawing professionally you know creeping up on like two years and then um man he spent a year on the wildcat special and by the end of that he was drawing pretty good. Wildcats 15 is solid. I, I've always really liked that issue. And then 16, he starts to get into this more... Um, he's starting to strip away detail. Stop. No fighting, guys. My one cat was stretching, and the other one started punching. <laughs> Don't do it. Seriously. Hold on. Sorry. I got... Don't fight. I'm going to turn you around. Stop. Um... And uh, but yeah, but but there was there was this point between Wildcats 15, 16, 17, 18, 20, 21, and then 25, where he really just like it was each issue, like the style was changing. Each issue was getting a little better. And and it was man, it really was like a plane taking off or a rocket taking off. And and over the next from 1990, like 1994 to 1997, God, that though that three years, he just brought it, and then he did X Men Wildcats, and everybody was like, "Whoa!" It was just like the, her face there. She said, "Shit!" So it was very very fun to see, and and. Uh, how I got into Travis's stuff is my sample pages that I did um, when I was trying to break in at Wildstorm. The editor in chief gave me, I don't know, about 10 or 12 photocopies. And most of them were artists that I didn't know it was Jeff Rebner, Ryan Benjamin, who wasn't on my radar yet, um, uh, some random stuff. And there was a Will Sportaccio page. There was two Aaron Weisenfeld photocopies from Team 7, and there was this Wildcats page from Wildcats 15, and it's with Grifter shooting down the helicopter. And uh, I remember seeing the pencils on that page and just going, like, I like this. Like, this this is the one that speaks to me. And he didn't give them to me to, like, cherry pick. I, I inked them all. Um, but, uh, yeah, I remember just really liking Travis's page and... and it, it just became like an infatuation for me to like, like I just liked his work the best, you know, I don't, I can't really explain it any other way is that was the best stuff to me. And they're all great. I mean, I like them all. Will Spartaccio is amazing. Aaron Weisenfeld was my favorite for a long time, but yeah, Travis had like some magic fairy dust on his stuff that just made it like a little, it's a little like, I don't know. It could be the cartooniness or something. I don't know. little details on the doorknob it's nice but yeah really really fun it was it was exciting you know as, as as like being a fan of someone to see them excel was exciting you know you were rooting for them 
I remember so clearly, it was before I was working professionally too, um, uh, waiting for Wildcats 18. That was right when I started collecting and I was becoming a fan of his. The Wildcat 17 issue was so good and then 18 just took forever to come out and I was just like, Oh man, is it ever gonna like come back? And then when it came back, it had a backup story, so it wasn't. It was like you know, sixteen pages of Travis, and then a, I think a Terry Dodson short story. Um, but uh, yeah, when I got to Wildstorm, I want to say that he was working on Wildcats Twenty One, the President's Club issue. I vaguely remember going into editorial, and I think some pages had come in from Troy that Troy had inked on that. Uh, and um, somewhere I actually have the script for that or Wildcats 25. When Travis left Wildstorm, he he left behind just like a little bit of random stuff. And I ended up with his um, tabaret or whatever you call it. Like just like the where you would put your junk, um, like a junk, like junk drawers. And he had left just some random shit that he didn't want. And, and it was an Alan Moore script uh, for one of those books. And I, I kept it because I was like, oh, this is really cool. Um, so somewhere I have that too, which is kind of like kind of neat, you know. I haven't seen it in uh, ten years at least. I have no idea where it is, but you know, it would have wound up in the trash if I didn't keep it too. So I talked a little bit about inking this type of stuff and the challenge of it. Um, and I shot a video that I didn't upload that I was, it was good, but not great. But, um, this, this stuff is very, very challenging to ink when you're, when you're working with such fine lines, because to create separation when you're working so thin is like, instead of having like, like imagine like four, four pens, you've got four microns in front of you. One's your 08, one's your 05, one's your 03, one's a 02 and one's an 01 and one's a 005. Those are all very, very different line weights that are very, very obvious that they're different line weights. The 08 doesn't really look like the 05. Um, and, um, but the thing is, is when you start working this thin, the, the difference between a hyper thin line and a hyper, hyper thin line is very, very small. And to get separation when you have sometimes two, three, five layers of things that overlap um, and you're working so thin, you really, really have to be mindful of your line weights because if not, it's just going to all turn flat and look like it's one thing. And so those those were really tricky areas to work over and have them still read clear. But you'll see that in the black and white stuff. We're going to look at one more page from this book and then um, we'll get into the black and whites. Again, I did that just so that the video wouldn't be too long. And then this... I remember inking this like it was yesterday. It's so funny. This is all Travis right here, though. Travis did all that by himself. That's like ink wash and um, kind of like his X-Men Wildcat style. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to get into this stuff. Don't peek. You don't want to spoil it for yourself. Close your eyes just for a second. I'll tell you when you can look. Continue. Keep going. Don't don't open your eyes. Now Photoshop will take the reins and it won't let you see them. So, all right. Now we're going to look at some black and white art from quite a few of the different issues. Some of them aren't that high res. If you want to find these online, they're either on my DeviantArt or Facebook. So you can kind of muddle your way through that if you want to find them or just take screen caps of this video. They're again, they're not super high res, but here's the black and white of um, the Venice establishing shot page. I love this man, it's so good. It, it's it's interesting doing this video today, um, because this was such a game changer in my career. It's really kind of cool, too. You can see like where he had penciled in a, a, another bubble effect, like a different silhouette of where the bubbles were going to maybe come from. You see it. And he probably didn't even have the panel border here because it dips down into here. But, um, yeah, you know, it was cool. I, I talked to Kelsey um, for about two hours on Sunday. We, we did like a Skype-style chat and talked about art and Blaster Kid and his book and 
really, really was, it was very exciting and educational and, um, you know, we're both so critical of our own work and we're both like taking on a lot of responsibility, which is penciling, inking, and, you know, you're self-publishing and writing it. And, um, you know, one job in comics is a lot, but to do multiple jobs is really quite a bit. And so it definitely helps to have someone as a sounding board to just keep you sane where it's like, Hey, no, I feel the same way. Cause we were talking about, um, going from pencils to inks and you know both of us draw pretty good i i mean i definitely am very comfortable where i'm at with like my drawing skills i want to get better but i mean i definitely i i'm aware of what i can do now and what i what i would struggle with and so it helps you know i've got a decent amount of experience under my belt at this point and um both of us have experienced this this treacherous point of when you pencil when you pencil something and you're going to ink it the idea of doing full pencils seems like a waste of time because you're like, well, I could do tight pencils. Let me talk about this page really quick and then I'll finish my point. So this is this is from issue three of Wildcats and it's um, Grifter is is uh, undercover as an ice cream man. This kid comes up to basically buy ice cream from who he believes is the ice cream man. And he starts blackmailing Grifter into giving him ice cream for free, saying that um, Grifter, you know, touched him. <laughs> So Grifter comes out of the truck and basically like scares the shit out of the kid, but he's peeing his pants. So you can see he's like kind of got his hands in front of his crotch. And then this is like him wetting himself. And he obviously dropped his ice cream cone, but it's pretty funny, like little storytelling thing that I think, I think that you would get the story of him threatening Grifter, but I don't know if you would know that Travis meant for him to be peeing himself. I can't remember if that's actually talked about in the book, but, um, then back to what I was saying is, um, but yeah, you know, there's like, like for both of us, we're both kind of realizing that we actually do need to pencil more that, that hopping to inks too soon and trying to like skip that step, you know, like say a page takes you 10 hour to 10 hours to pencil. If you were going to do full pencils for someone else to ink, but you inking it yourself, you could draw it in maybe four hours and then start, start to draw it in ink we're both under the impression that it's not, not been to our best interests. He is probably better at it. Well, I don't, we, we probably both can pull it off sometimes, but it's definitely not a good idea for me right now. I need to pencil more. So things like that, you know, you, when you can get feedback from someone like that, it definitely helps. So it was cool to hear that. Cause he's like, no, I'm the same way. I'm, I'm like, I think I need to pencil more. It just sucks because you're like, oh, God, like that's so much time. So this is from issue two. This is Voodoo pulling up at the hotel motel that they're staying at. And, and I, I kind of get the impression that they might be the only people staying here. Like this might have been like set up for them to look like a motel from Halo or something like that. But anyway, um, she's out getting groceries and she kind of feels like nothing's going on. But the whole time... Um, uh, Jeremy is actually experimenting on, on himself and doing like crazy shit. So he's trying to get back to human form before she gets into the apartment because the security beepers are beeping for him that she's pulled up. Here's the tank page. I think I have a better scan of this, but anyway. Beautiful design on this one. The Balance of Terror. All right. Oh yeah, this. So this was kind of neat. I, I, I've, I've seen this page a million times. One thing that I hadn't seen in forever was this up here. The Wildcats, Balance of Terror, Issue 1, Page 1, Travis, Rich Friend. He wrote all this himself. Um, that really brought back a lot of memories for me in a weird way. It was like it almost moved me more than the art in some ways because it's like this is when it became real. I remember him handing me this page and pencil. And I was just like, I can't believe that this is happening. I'm fucking working on Wildcats with T-Bone. The, the man, Travis. It was unreal. But there it was right there. But yeah, it was crazy. It was so fun. Oh my god. I forgo coffee while I was working on the job. I was so serious about it. I wouldn't drink any caffeine when I was working on it, so my hand would be steady as a rock. Steady, steady. Now I drink so much caffeine, I look like Gene Wilder and 
blazing saddles. <laughs> I was, I would, I would drink so much coffee at Wildstorm sometimes. <laughs> oh my god, it's crazy. I turned into Cornholio. Uh, this is the page. I wanted more. It was like, this was like such a, like, I was like, oh, come on, man. Bring me the cats. Come on. Put them in the costumes. Let them fight Damon. I, oh, God. You just think of, like, all the different things that he could have drawn. Like, I mean, they could have done anything. Oh, my God. It would have been so good. Ah. Uh, it's funny because uh, Chip, if you see this, what's up? Well, I miss you. I miss seeing you. I, my good friend Chip, I grew up with. Chip, Chip is uh, uh, I met Chip when we were like, like probably in eight years old, and uh, he's probably my only friend that I grew up with that I know that actually is into comic books. But he loves Travis just as much as I I do, and uh, I how I found out that he was into comics was was I was going to buy Wildcats eighteen, and I bumped into him at the store, and I was like. Hey, what's up? What are you doing here? He's like, he's like getting comics. It was because that was when comics were huge, and I was like, I didn't know you like comics. I'm into comics. And then we became friends again because we hadn't. It was like after high school, so I hadn't seen him in a while. And then Chip, Chip would fill in blacks for me for a long time, uh, on not on this job, but uh, like other like um, jobs that I would do. He would uh, assist me and fill in the black areas so I could save a little wear and tear on my mind and body so thank you for that chippy chippy you you, you extended my career <laughs> it's it's like man that is the one hard thing about traditional art like again i did all the blacks on this stuff myself but um man some stuff oh god you could spend hours filling in blacks this is the cover for issue three uh, Travis went in and painted these arms. I always get questions like, "What is what's going on with his arms?" That's the wash effect that he used on X Men Wildcats. Not exactly. This application's a little more painterly than than how he did it on X Men Wildcats, but um, same idea. And this, I didn't have a eleven by seventeen scanner back when I did this job, so I had scanned this in two pieces at home at some point. But um, yeah, there's still a little bit of wash on the two arms, but I ink the rest of the piece, just not that, not just not this. I could not do that. <laughs> Maybe now I could, but I don't know. Some wild shit. It's like it doesn't even really make sense, honestly. If you like, from an anatomical point of view, parts of it do. It's just kind of wild, like wild looking stuff. But it, boy, it looks cool. could see a little bit of wash here on her hands like on the gloves and a little bit on her face and i don't think this is like line work it may look like wash but on jeremy this is like really fine lines um yeah i don't think there's any other wash he would do like random stuff like that though he probably wanted it on her face and then just did it here This is the piece that we already saw. So this was our first version of the Wizard cover, as I said, and ended up being like a promo mag. This, I don't know why it's in here. It's not as good as the other scan, but it's the cover for Wildcats 1. Okay, so this is this is my office at Wildstorm, and um, they made, they called these standees, and that's a life-size Spartan standee based on our art, and it's the first Wildcats piece that I inked over Travis, or Wildcats for our book, I'll say. Um, piece and in fact um, it was like Spartan was one of the hardest things to ink on the damn piece his face was so tricky um, but uh, but yeah so I, I had that in my office forever and um, that's, that's the view from my office it was amazing um, and then it's funny because these are all humanoids books right here this is my bookshelf and um, these are all humanoids hardcovers and at the time Wildstorm was translating all the books from French and whatever languages they had been reprinted in to English and uh, so when they were finished with the the non-English versions they would um, get rid of them and I would keep them all because I was like well if they're just gonna throw them out like I'll take them so <laughs> that's all my like free humanoid books I still have them all too 
and it, it is funny is is literally Travis uh, ended up working for Humanoids right after he left Wildstorm. I got my Millennium Falcon, some Star Wars stuff. And then this is Travis, me, and Alex Sinclair signing at the Comic Book Legal Defense Fund booth for Wildcats. And we had done an exclusive print um, with Scott Lobdell uh, that uh, they were giving away. This is a fake look from Travis. He's not really pissed. He's just, he's, he's putting it on a, <laughs> he's putting on a thing. Oh man, we need to do more books, guys. Come on, Travis, call me. <laughs> call me on the cellular. <laughs> All right, we've got Voodoo chasing one of the brothers' death. Run, run, run. And then she gets mad. And then someone's going to get a shot in the butt here in a second, but not on this page. And then Voodoo <clears throat> with her gun. Travis would use um, Ultimate Soldier toy guns as reference. They're like um, like Barbie Barbie doll size G.I. Joe looking things, but they have super realistic costumes. He had a ton of them around his desk, but um, yeah, he would he would um, buy the gun packs or had guns that came with the toys, and so he would use those as reference um, for uh, them. He probably had a lot of this stuff memorized, but um, he definitely had those toys. So this is from issue six, and you can see the style is starting to get different. He started doing a lot more detail and was kind of going this, like, this, I don't know if I'd call it a completely different direction, but it's definitely more um, labor-intensive. It's Mike Heisler. He uh, created Union, was editor-in-chief at Wildstorm. He's lettered a whole bunch of books for Mobius and Mike Mignola and back in the back in the days and um created union wrote union and created the character underneath this panel right here if you see it's actually pasted down travis had another penciled version of this panel and he he used like i don't know what kind of glue he used but it it came loose and i could peek under it and see what the original drawing was but um but yeah, this is actually a cutout panel post pasted down on there, which is the, the only time that I've seen him do that. So he had a different idea for what he wanted there. <clears throat> Here's Jeremy, black and white. Love this piece. So cool. Just really, really cool looking. These pipes were really tricky to do. I didn't really mention it in this video, but I did in one of my scrap versions. Most of the stuff was all done freehand, and also all the circles and stuff that you see in the video. Um, he he rarely would use templates for anything, and if you tried to use templates for like stuff like this, um, you, they weren't going to match up. And so, also, a true circle will look really flat. I have to be careful of that when I pencil stuff myself. Honestly, my cat's messing around the microphone. Um... Because uh, it immediately will flatten out things if you have a pure circle on things. So you have to be careful of that because it's highly unlikely that you're ever going to look at a circle straight on in a drawing. Unless you're like Mike Mignola or something like that. Um, but yeah, so not a great idea. This is awesome. <clears throat> a little bit of a better scan. This is where it all began, friends. This is where it all began. All right. This is scanned off the original art. It's not a super high-res scan, but this is the bottom half of the tank page. I can't remember why I scanned it, but I did. This is probably on my old scanner. Oh, yeah, okay, so this is interesting. So a fan took this, like I said before, I was I was working one day and someone came into the office and was just like uh, getting a tour. I don't even remember what it was. And uh, they um, snapped this photo of me working on this page, sent it to me like a year or two later as far as I, like how I remember it or gave it to me at a con. And um, it's awesome. And it's me working on one of these pages. I mean, you can see it's like in progress. 
Um, you can, if you look down here, you can see Grifter upside down. This is his head, and this is his body, and that's like the rope and stuff like that. Travis's pencils were really, really light, and that's what I'm saying. Is like, you needed to have killer eyes. You needed to have monster chops in terms of inking. You better really, really be able to catch the subtleties of all the little things that he did. And um, you have to be handsome. <laughs> No, but uh, yeah, isn't that crazy? It's really, really cool. I wish I had more photos of stuff like that. It's interesting too, because I was trying to figure out what was on my desk. So there's, there's some sort of a page or something there. I, I don't know what that would be. If it's a photocopy of something, it doesn't look like Travis art. It's funny because I can tell that it's not. It's too detailed. Like there's, there's like a little too much information going on the layout doesn't feel travesty but it could have been a photocopy of anything i mean um let me see and what's this is that that well so that's okay so my table is going like this oh, let me grab a color my My table, what the, oh, I'm on a racer tool, or a dodge tool, that's why, here. Yeah, my table is going like this. And so this is like over here. This is my scratch paper. I was trying to figure out what this is. My ink well would be like right here. I'd have, I'd have ink in a well right here, probably. And because I'm using rapidographs, I don't have um, like, a bunch of strokes on here because it's like what i would do is i would dip a brush in here sharpen it here and then i'd be inking like here i'm doing this with a mouse but um this the other thing that this could be is this could be that i was using it for my hand so that i wouldn't smudge on the thing and so i might have been using that paper to like put it over this while i was inking like here you know what i mean so my hand wasn't constantly touching the page i have no idea what that is for a second, honestly, when I really looked at this thing, I for a split second, I thought that this wasn't a completely finished penciled page because this didn't look completely done to me. But but it, I I believe it is. They they had me do a weird thing, not weird, but when I when we started the book, they came in one day and they said, "Hey, we need you to ink like these six faces and parts of characters on different pages so that we can put together an ad for the book." And then they did kind of like a Drew Struzan montage of, of images. So there was a point where I inked just like a, you know, a panel or a face. And so there was all these like things that were partially inked that I had done that were for the ad. So people would see that and they would get confused and go, why is like part of the page inked? I mean, Travis definitely would occasionally go in and ink something just if, if he wanted oh the reason i had that book in there is i always loved that cover and that was like my first favorite wildcats issue before pre-travis bc before charay <laughs> voodoo in the pool a voodoo in the pool all right cc rendoza at the pool voodoo in the pool and then all the baddies showing up. That's so crazy. This was the first prom like this was the first promo that we did, but it wasn't the promo that I was talking about where they wanted me to ink random stuff. This was actually a piece that was done, but it was exciting. I remember I, I worked on it most of the day at the studio and then I went home and I was working on it at night. And I, I got like nearly done and I started getting kind of like um, unsure and I was I was getting really nervous about inking Spartan and like his face was like it, Travis was drawing the noses more realistic. And so he had kind of like more of a Roman style nose as opposed to the Jim Lee, you know, like kind of real sharp nose. Again, I'm doing this with a mouse, but, you know, like Jim's noses are kind of like that and heart, uh, Spartan kind of had more of a beak. Again, like a, a little bit of like a Roman nose. And it was tripping me out. And I was like, I don't know. Did I ink this thing wrong? So Travis was still at the studio working. I drove back up there at night and had him look at it. Because I was so freaked out that I was like going to mess it up. 
Um, but uh, I lived close enough to the studio that it wasn't too far to drive to visit. So This is our Wizard cover, the one that actually did end up being um, published at, on Wizard Magazine. Of course, they didn't credit me, but that's another story. But anyway, the good news is that they made sure to cover up the signatures on the cover also. <laughs> so my first Wizard cover is like... I'm non-existent on it. Thanks, wizard. It's too bad that it's over, and I'm still working in comics. That's like right. That's the, that's the, <laughs> the win. No. Wizard was fun. It was a good magazine. I I always picked up Wizard. Good times. I had so many cool columns and stuff. I'd buy Wizard to this day, honestly. Although, I, I don't know if I would be as into the comics that they're, they would spotlight in it. Maybe, but... Yeah, Wizard was good shit. This is not a very good photocopy. This looks so muddy. <laughs> but anyway, we saw a good version of it before. I think I do have a slightly bigger photocopy of this, though. But you could see that this was all in the original. This is Travis's handwriting up here. Oh, and this will be the bigger one. Yeah, this is better. A little clearer. Yeah, people love this panel. It was funny, as in one of the other videos that I shot that I scrapped today of this, I said, um, I might I might try to do a throwback to this in Blaster Kid. Not not this exact shot, but I like people love this wall. And I think like Spartan's costume being all ripped up. So I thought it would be funny if I get an opportunity to do something like this, I might do like a holler back to this piece. Um, just, just as like, not, it wouldn't really be an Easter egg, but you know what I mean? Kind of, I think it's kind of funny. I could have her upside down too. <laughs> oh man, comics is so fun. This is a close up shot of a very, very small drawing. Uh, the original, it's probably about this big. But oh, it's a big scan of it. Well, again, if you look at these circles, they're, they're all free-handed. Look at them. You see? They're not really circles. They're close, but they're, they're, they're all a little bit wonky. And that, like I said, if you used a circle template and tried to do this, it would look weird because they wouldn't match up with what Travis drew. So the only way around it was to actually freehand them. But you can really tell that they're not steady hand rich. That's what they called me back in the design. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. See, like, look at all these. <laughs> Imagine. But from like, like, if you looked at the actual original, you couldn't tell. We were really zoomed in like a lot on that. But um, yeah, they're all a little crooked. They're all a little a little like they have little variables and stuff like that. And it was just easier to honestly hold your breath and draw them like uh, that than to uh, do it. And even straight lines like this, like all this. I can't remember if I inked this lo logo or if he did. But um, really almost all the straight lines that we did in the book too were also freehanded. Like stuff like this. I, I, don't, I probably didn't use a ruler for this. Maybe these, but I, I kind of doubt it. Honestly, those aren't very long lines. It just it slows you down. That's the thing. Is is again going back to what I was I was saying. Kelsey and I were talking about doing full pencils. Like I could do those long straight lines like right now, but it literally like you could do it with a ruler, and it would take you you know forty seconds. You could do it freehand and it might take you five minutes or four minutes, you know, where you're slowing down and you're really kind of methodically um, doing it. Same with all these windows back here. These are all freehand. I was thinking that these lines right here might be ruled. It's possible. But, um, uh, yeah, you know, um, but when you when you have to do, like, a lot of work, 
is it worth it? Is it, you know what I mean? Because the thing is, is what if you all the time you're constantly freehanding stuff and you're taking an extra 10 minutes, an extra 20 minutes, does it look that much better? That's what I'm saying. Is the time worth the quality? Now, where I will say that something like that actually is more, and, and this is a real problem with digital inks, is those ruler tools and all those dead straight lines and pixel perfect lines, they look terrible. It looks so bad, you know? And it's, I know it's the easy way to do it in the program and there's not an easy way to really draw long straight lines. But you can do this though. You can take a ruler and put it on your Cintiq or, or a triangle um, and and do you put run your stylus across it like that. It's a little bit better than using just sort of like the, this kind of thing. Because those lines just have no character. There's, I mean, I'm doing it with a brush tool in Photoshop. It's not Clip Studio, but but it's just that that has no personality to it. At least, at least when you use a ruler and like a crow quill, I'm again, I'm doing this with a mouse and my finger pointer finger. You know, you can you can have some variants. You know, you can you can have little breaks or you know. I, I don't have pressure sensitivity on this, but you know what I mean? You could you could do things that have a little bit more personality to it. So it's definitely, oh, hold on, let's look at this page. This is a beautiful, beautiful page. I'm nearly sure I own this original. I, I'm almost positive that I have this page. Um, this panel right here is just phenomenal. It's so good. This is just incredible. This is awesome. I mean, this little TV screen thing, the grass, if you could see it better here, it's just beautiful. It's just this like beautiful thin little blades of grass that we put in. Pinstripes on Noir's pants, the texture on this chair, the leaves, some masterpiece of comic art. Grifter's hair and beard, it's just so kick ass. We were so good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding there. Uh, so this is one of the other Gap ad. We, we did two quote-unquote Gap ad covers. Uh, one was bad bad characters from Wildcats. The other was um, the good guys, the, the hero team Wildcats. But I don't know what the I don't know what the thought process was on him choosing to put them in shirts that had their names and khaki pants, but he did it. And um, yeah, they're they're kind of unusual covers. So this was fan made, but I always like this. It's not very high res, but it's a desktop um, that they made. I really like it, honestly. I was thinking about doing a higher res recreation of it. Um, be, be, I just I like the layout of it. I like the colors. I mean, I, I they kind of turned this into like monochrome, but uh, I, I think it's really really cool. So I was thinking about maybe trying to put together like a Wildcats uh, desktop or oh you know. Maybe this, you know what? I bet way back in the day, early internet, we're talking probably in 2000, they may have had this up on the site. And maybe Ed Roeder or one of those guys put it together. I never considered that. I thought that the person that shared it had it, but it's weird that they would put wildstorm.com. So that's, and then all this. And do you see imprint of DC Comics? That, that was, Travis did not like that. He was not thrilled that Wildstorm was being taken over by DC at the time. <clears throat> I wasn't either, but I wasn't in a position like Travis was where I could go to Europe and draw a book for humanoids, you know? So it was like, I was going to write it out. It was at that point, I was kind of, I wasn't all in on comics, but it was getting to that point. You know where I had been in the business for five years and really liked it and kind of wanted to see where it would all go. Where will it all go? This was a sketch Travis did of me. Um, so he left this on my desk at some point, and it's it's a, it's. Oh no! You know what? This is a digital drawing. I think this is a digital piece that he sent me um, when he was in Europe. I can't remember. I you know what? No, I think this is pen and ink. This looks a little digital, but I I you're not sure I have this on paper. I I think that he left this on my desk. But anyway, it was a funny little caricature he did of me. But it's and 
Uh, so this was me at that time, and then this is my cat, so you can get an idea. But I used to have... My hair actually used to be much longer than this. My bangs would go down to, like, right about here. So my hair was about like this at one point. I didn't cut it for how many years? Seven years. I didn't... I, I, I don't even think I got it trimmed at some point. Uh, and then that's my cat, Pandora. <laughs> All right, this is a test page that I did while I was working professionally to show that I was capable of other inking styles than the stuff that I was currently inking. So my guess is I probably did this in around 1996 or 97. And, uh, you know, even though I was working professionally, I was, I was trying to get a foothold, you know, like... Um, like, here's the A-listers, Travis, Jim, Wills, J. Scott Campbell, they're all up here. I was working at, like, kind of, like, C-plus level work, maybe, somewhere around there, C-level stuff. B is, like, you know, kind of, like, the people that have been in the business, Tom Ranney, you know, people that are heading this direction. Um, Ryan Benjamin could be somewhere in between the two. You think Ryan was A-lister? Okay, Kitty, thank you. But, um, yeah, so, so, um... You know, the only way to really work your way up the ladder, in particular as an inker at Wildstorm, is you really had to, um, it, not not jockey for position, but it was like, you know, like say Alex Garner couldn't ink a piece. He was busy, he was going out of town, whatever it was. You wanted to hopefully, like if they, if they, if Scott Williams was too busy, you, well, and JD, because JD was like another big inker at Wildstorm that was Scott Williams' assistant. So you had, you, you had, you had the vacuum, which was the big three. You had Scott, JD, and, and Alex. So if, if those three couldn't ink something, it started to go to Sandra Hope. I think that's right. Like, I think she ended up being kind of fourth in line. And I remember being really excited for her when she started to get, um, things that that um like alex was too busy for because she started inking j scott campbell more and more and ultimately ended up getting um, umberto ramos for a while but uh yeah so i was trying to position myself into that group whereas like i could be the fifth person that if if someone couldn't do a job oh tom mcweeney was up there too tom, tom was really really good so so yeah, you had, you know, maybe seven inkers ahead of me because I broke in in 95 and they had been working since 92, 93, you know, whenever they broke in. So it's like you really had to hustle. Chuck Gibson was another inker that worked. Oh, Trevor Scott. See, dude, I'm telling you, it was stacked. In my book, they were all A-listers, but I'm just saying that, like, you know, there was, like, clearly Jim Lee sold a lot of books. Clearly J. Scott Campbell sold a lot of books. Clearly Travis was, you know, like, a very special artist. So those those were the elites. <laughs> like, Michael Turner, you know, like a top cow would have been like that. Finch, Finch t too, I think. Clearly Silvestri. Okay. Now we've seen this. CC. Oh, yeah. So, all right. We're going to be wrapping this up. We're getting to the final four, I think. Yeah, four left. So, you guys have a great day. Go read your new Wildcats book. I really hope it's good. I read a review. The guy was very, very complimentary towards the book. He thought it was funny. He thought the dialogue was great. He thought that there was some really cool story set up. And he said the art was really good. So, I don't know. We'll see. The preview was not grabbing me, to be honest. It didn't look bad, but it didn't feel like... Um, it didn't completely feel like a Wildcats experience to me. I and and I, sh I I didn't show it to someone else. Someone else showed it to me to be clear. But but I but I I said I go I go it just doesn't feel like Wildcats. And he goes eh, it doesn't to me either. It doesn't mean that it's bad though. It just it was like it didn't feel like it didn't feel like a Wildstorm book. It didn't look like a Wildstorm book. It looked like um you know, which it's not. <laughs> that train left the station, friends. Here's the other gap bad one. So this was the first one that we did, and then the villain one we did um, a couple of days later.
what do you guys think of these pieces? Do you like them? Did you think that they were, like, at the time, were you like, huh? I personally think that they do look better in black and white than in color. The colors were good, don't get me wrong, but I think I, I, I've always liked this piece in black and white a little bit better than color. But yeah, I'd be curious of what you think of it. The chair, this is cropped. There's there's more of the piece for some reason. I, I don't remember why I cropped these. And this is a better skin of this. I'm just going to get some of this bluish tint off the skin. Oh, this head of hair back here. It's so crazy. <laughs> he probably drew it so fast, but I bet it took me, I don't know, how long would that take to ink? 30 minutes, probably. Something like that. He could ink it fast. I guarantee Travis could probably ink that in five or ten minutes. But I would go slower and be more careful. But he could knock that shit out fast. I remember... Um, God, what did he do? They needed, like, a logo or something. He did it so quick. I couldn't believe it. I It's like... <laughs> Like everyone else, I mean, you just you assumed for the quality that he got he, that he did that that it would take him a long time to draw stuff, and he had to draw something one night, and it was like it was like five o'clock in the afternoon, so it was like kind of getting dark out, like it was like sunset. And I remember, I I like was probably packing up and getting ready to go, and um, he was sitting down to kind of like start doing it. Oh God, I miss those days so much. It was so fun having him at the studio, and. Uh, yeah, I like I like went down to my office, which was kind of on the other side of like Wildstorm, and then I walked back and came back. And he was like done or like almost done, and I was like, I was like, oh, it was it was the rendering on the logo. Hold on, you know what? I can uh, let me see something. Is it okay? So it was. I can explain what it was. Oh, wait, it's this. It was this, this logo, N not, not this exact one, but, but yeah, like it was this, it was this logo, but done like on, on a different thing, or maybe it was even done on this piece. He did it so quick. I mean, it's like, I'm not saying this is like a hard thing to draw, but, but it just took him a couple of minutes and it looks so good. Like if I was going to do something like that right now for like Blaster Kid, I'd, you know, I'd want the letters to be a certain way and I'd be like trying to, you know, make sure the rendering was good and it would, you know, I'd probably spend an hour on it. I, I might not need to spend an hour on it, but you know what I mean? I, I would handle it with care. He just like cranked it out, but it was something like that. So, all right, that's it. You got your Wildcats fixed. Now go read the new Wildcats. I'm literally, I'm going to go buy it right now and and read it i'm very curious after seeing this to see if it captures me i really wanted to to be honest I, I i would love nothing more than to read it and have it completely get me back into wildcats where i want to pull out every wildcats thing that i own and go down the wildcats rabbit hole so that's my hope for it all right i'll talk to you guys later you have a great day my cats want lunch they eat lunch at four o'clock what do you guys think do you want lunch Okay? If I say okay, they always think that means they're getting fed. You guys want lunch? I'm waiting for her to talk. Sable, do you want lunch? Charlotte. Charlotte, do you want lunch? Oh, they're confused. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good one. Bye.